Recently, I've been helping my mom get all the exterior lights on her house set up to turn on and off automatically. To do this, I decided to hook her up with these Eaton Wi-Fi smart switches. Link in the video description. These switches work with Amazon Alexa, and since they connect to your home's Wi-Fi network, you can control them from anywhere in the world where you have an internet connection. Today, I'll be replacing this switch here, which is the one that controls the light next to my mom's front door. Wow. To install the switch, we're going to need a few tools. First, we need both a flathead and Phillips head screwdriver, a pair of wire cutters, some wire strippers, some large red wire nuts, and some extra pieces of wire, because since this is a computerized device, it needs both the white neutral and green ground wires connected to it as well, and these extra little sections of wire will help us get things wired up correctly. Whenever you're dealing with electricity, you're first going to want to go to your electrical panel and turn the power off to the device you're working on. My mom's panel isn't labeled as well as some others I've seen, but after a few minutes turning breakers on and off, we finally figured out it was this one here we wanted to turn off. Once our switch was safe to work on, I removed the trim plate from the switches using a flathead screwdriver. Even though I was only replacing the one switch, I needed to remove both switches from the box in order to get access to the neutral and ground wires which were tucked back behind the other switch. Uh, once I had both switches removed from the box, I grabbed my wire cutters and cut off the two black wires from the old switch and then used some wire strippers to remove some of the insulation to get it ready to connect to our new smart switch. It was at this point that I referenced the uh, instructions included with the switch and followed their wiring diagram to get things wired up correctly. They show how to wire it up for both a single location as well as for a three-way, uh, which is when you have more than one switch controlling a single light. My mom's light has just one switch controlling it, so I needed to follow the diagram on the top of the instructions here. I then took my white and green wires I had prepared and first connected the green wire to the ground terminal on the switch. And then connected the white wire to the neutral terminal on the switch. With that done, I connected my little green pigtail to the bundle of ground wires in the box using one of the red wire nuts. And then removed the wire nut from the white wires and added my little white pigtail to the bunch and then secured them all together using that same red wire nut. Next, I connected the load or charge wire to the switch, uh, which is the black wire that goes to the light fixture. And our final wire is the hot wire. Uh, this is the one that is supplying the power to the light. It was easy for me to tell which was which in this case because it was wire nutted together with the wire that goes to the other switch next to it, and that switch controls my mom's interior entryway light, so I knew the black wire that both switches were connected to had to be the hot wire. If you're following along with this tutorial and you're not sure which one is which in your particular case, don't worry about it, it's not a really big deal. You'll know if you got them backwards once you turn the breaker back on and the switch doesn't work. If that happens to you, there's no need to worry, you didn't mess anything up. Uh, all you gotta do is go back and swap the two black wires and you'll be good to go. Now that I had the new switch all wired up, I had to cram all the wiring somewhat neatly back into the box and then screw both switches back into their respective slots. I then placed the trim plate back on and secured it in place using the screws I had removed earlier. I then went back out to my mom's garage to her electrical panel, turned the power back on and was happy to see the switch was working properly. The little white flashing light you see here means the switch is in setup mode and ready to be connected to your home network and get it all set up. Rather than create an app of their own, Eaton has decided to just use the Alexa app to control these switches. So to pair the switch with Alexa, you first need to have the Alexa app installed on your smartphone or tablet and be all logged into your account and whatnot. You'll then launch the app, tap on devices here at the bottom, then tap on the plus sign here at the top of the screen, tap on add device, 
and it will want to know what kind of device we're adding. We're adding a light switch, so we'll tap on switch. It then wants to know the brand of switch we're using. Ours is an Eaton, so we'll tap on that. Uh, we then need to tell it what kind of switch we're installing. This one is not a dimmer or anything, so we'll select switch here. And now it wants me to have my Bluetooth and location turned on on my phone, so I guess I need to do that. And then tap next. At this screen, we'll tap next again. And then next one more time at this screen. And now we're ready to pair our light switch. To pair it, we'll need to go to our light switch and double tap the switch in the on direction. And then it will ask us to select the Wi-Fi network we want to connect the switch to. I selected my mom's network here at the top of the list and then waited 30 seconds or so while it got connected. Once the switch had connected to my mom's home network, I tapped next again and then it wanted to know if we wanted to add the switch to a group. I had already created some groups for my mom while installing some other switches and we wanted this one to be part of the outdoor lights group. So I tapped on that and then add to group. Then on continue and finally on done. The next step was to get the switch set up on a schedule because my mom wants this light to come on each evening at sunset and then turn off each morning at sunrise. I'm sorry to say I'm not going to be covering that in this video however and you'll have to check out my next video to learn how to do that. Alexa is capable of controlling tons of different types of devices all with very different functions. So there's a ton of options to choose from and it's a little bit overwhelming the first time you go to set a schedule like that up. So I felt showing how to do that and how to set up and assign devices to a group was deserving of its own dedicated video. Again, I'm sorry I'm not showing how to do that here, but I hope that you'll understand.